One of the most prestigious international literary awards is the annual Man Booker Prize. Marlon James, a professor of English at McAllister College in Minnesota, is the first Jamaican writer to win for his novel, A Brief History of Seven Killings. Jeffrey Brown talked to him at the Miami Book Fair in November. This, this novel is a, a set in a Jamaica you grew up in, right, mm -hmm. in the 1970s, yeah. 80s, a violent time. Um, oh, it was a violent time, but it was also a, a time of a huge explosion in Jamaican culture. And, and funny enough, 1976 is in some ways responsible, or the 70s is in some ways responsible for my writing career because the whole idea of writing in the voice of the people, writing in the voice that comes out of my own mouth, is a reggae concept, uh -huh. and it's something that also came out of of the seventies, which is not to turn a blind eye. It was a it was a horrible time, a lot of the time. Um, you know, but, but pick up on that. I mm. mean, reggae influenced so many people in terms of the music, mm. but it influenced your ear, you know, was, the voice. Yeah, and not just uh, it influenced um, quite a few Caribbean writers. The poets first, certainly, but the idea that you the the voice. Of, of the voice that was in your mouth, which has always been called broken English, as if it needs to be fixed, yeah. could be used to tell very complicated things, stories that have no resolution, characters that you can't just dismiss mm -hmm. or outright condemn, um, not falling into this kind of step and fetch it kind of comedy, was something that reggae did, and that was also something that came out of the 70s, this sort of taking cultural ownership of your own voice. The, the plot revolves around an attempted assassination of Bob Marley, mm -hmm. but it's not a fictional biography of Marley. That's just no. in the background. You didn't want to do that. You wanted to set it with him in the center, but then everything him, else. Him in the center, but spinning, but the story's really about what's going on around him. You like that sense of being in history, but not right in the history that we read in the history books. Yeah, and it's yeah. been something that's been a concern of mine from, you know, from my first novel. Yeah. Um, this sort of interior history of Jamaica, because it starts out being um, about a bunch of men and women in the whole periphery of Marley, but then it, it goes on to talk about the Cold War and how the 70s created the 80s and, mm -hmm. and, and how we're still reeling from that and making sense of that. You talked about writing for a sense of sight, for a sense mm -hmm. of smell, the kind of sensory perception yeah. that comes, that you, you feel that in your writing. Mm -hmm. I feel that and it's something that I, I teach and it's something that I've been very sort of deliberate about. Um, because it, I think we over rely on sight, and there's more to it than that. A writer who's really good at invoking all details is Sebastian Unger. Yeah. And he, he will sometimes nail all five senses in the first 50 words. I don't even know if he's doing it consciously. Yeah. So when but you're doing it consciously. I'm doing it consciously, consciously because I, I do. I, I am a very, it's funny because I'm actually a very, I'm not a mechanical writer, but I'm a mechanical writing teacher. Yeah. And I said, you know when people say I felt like I was there, what they're saying is you unlocked all five senses. And I think, for example, smell carries memory, smell carries nostalgia. Um, when was the last time a book made you taste something? And I think these are really, really important for this sort of immersive feel, especially in my case where I'm taking them into really negative territory. Mm -hmm and really dark areas. So it's not just paint a portrait that I can see, mm -hmm. it's, it's put me in there. It's putting you in there. If you're gonna, if you're gonna have food, cook it. <laughs> or at least let me, you know, smell it. What does the paint smell like? I was speaking to some, um, the Royal Society for the Blind in England and they, they were giving me a, a special sort of um, <clears throat> recognition for the book because it, 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 it focuses on all other senses. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's visually impaired can still get a full sense of the novel as mm -hmm. opposed to so much of it being locked out from them because we're writing so much on sight. A person who's been blind all his life has no idea what red means. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how do you write red, right? That's a question I ask my class. Yeah. Tell somebody who's been blind all their life what red is. What is, describe red. So do you know the impact of winning the, the Booker? Um, man, I have no idea. I mean, it's, on, it's nice seeing it on the bestseller list. I'm yeah. not complaining. <laughs> I, um, I really hope it makes people more curious about Caribbean lit. And, and beyond Caribbean lit, beyond Which is Anglo, very rich, I mean, in a way that we rich. don't know. And even when we talk about rich Caribbean lit, we tend to talk just about English speaking. Mm -hmm. um, Cuban lit has never needed anybody's help. It's, uh, um, 
uh, there's great literature coming out of Puerto Rico. There's always been great literature coming out of Haiti. Um, Suriname, uh, the Dutch Caribbean also writes. Mm -hmm. And also some great, some great new novels coming out of Barbados and Jamaica. All right, A Brief History of Seven Killings. Marlon James, thank you, and again, congratulations. Thanks for having me.